Hi, welcome to podcast number 14 in MA2286, Advanced Calculus. In this podcast, I want to introduce the notion of a three form. I want to explain how we can multiply a one form and a two form in order to produce a three form. And I want to explain how we can differentiate a two form in order to produce a three form. I'll begin with the definition of a differential three form. So, I'll go rapidly because the definition is very analogous to the case of two form. Uh, so a definition three, uh, a differential three form is a function omega uh, defined on a, on a domain in n dimensional space. It inputs a point P of the domain and three vectors. So a three form inputs three vectors, which I'll write as V, V prime and V double prime. And it returns a real number, which I'll write as omega of P, V, V prime, V double prime. The three form has to satisfy some properties, some algebraic properties. So it has to be linear in the first input vector V as expressed by the first of the equations there. It has to be linear in the second input vector V prime as expressed by the second of the equations. And the three form has to be linear in the third input vector V double prime. Furthermore, um, if two of the input vectors are identical, then the return number has to be zero. So if the first two input vectors are identical, uh, the value of omega has to be zero. If the second two input vectors are identical, the value of omega has to be zero. And if the first and last input vectors are identical, then the value of omega has to be zero. And in order to justify the term differential, uh, we can fix three input vectors uh, for arbitrary fixed input vectors v, v prime and v double prime. We can construct a function which, which takes a point p in the domain of definition and returns the real number omega of p, v, v prime, v double prime. And that function has to be smooth. So I'll look at um, the case n equal to 3 first of all and introduce some terminology or notation. So a three form on three-dimensional space, uh, we will write using the notation a of x, y, z, dx, wedge, dy, wedge, dz. So here a is a is a function, a smooth function, and I'll say something about the symbols of the notation dx, wedge, dy, wedge, dz. Now um, I'll work with an example to explain it. So Suppose then that we have um, the expression x squared plus y squared dx wedge dy wedge dz. So here the function a is x squared plus y squared. Uh, let's explain how we evaluate the three form represented by that expression, how we evaluate it on th a given point p and three given vectors. So first off, um, we have to evaluate the function x squared plus y squared at the point p. So uh, we're using the, the ordering uh, x, y, z. So the x and y correspond to the first two entries of the point p. So we calculate 1 squared plus 2 squared. And then we multiply by a certain volume. So what does that mean? Well, in two, two, when we define two forms, it was all about uh, areas of parallelograms. When we come to define three forms, uh, it's, it's about volumes of parallel pipettes. So I'll say something about that now. OK, so to evaluate this uh, expression, this, this, this three form, we calculate 1 squared plus 2 squared. And then we calculate the volume of some parallel piped. So this volume, this number of a, you know, the volume is a number, I'm going to denote by a matrix, but with straight lines either side. That's called a determinant. Uh, I'm assuming that students haven't met determinants of three by three matrices yet. You'll meet those uh, next semester in the linear algebra module. So for the moment then, I'm going to regard uh, this array with straight lines beside it as a volume of a parallel piped. Let me explain how. So the three vectors, v, v prime and v double prime, they can be regarded as three arrows in three-dimensional space emanating from the origin. I've drawn them in yellow. And 
those three arrows can be completed in an obvious fashion to 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 form a parallel pipe head so opposite faces are opposite edges and opposite faces are parallel um, that parallel pipe head will have a volume and that volume it will be a number and that number I am denoting by straight lines and then a 3x3 three three matrix and there's a slight twist to it because uh, orientations will be important uh, just as they were important for two forms and for one forms so it's a volume but there's a sign has to be incorporated a plus minus one has to be incorporated into the volume and I'll say more about that twist in a moment but for the moment uh, let's 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 just regard this as a volume which we can calculate um, and I think I've done it it comes to so 1 squared plus 2 squared is 5 and the volume of that parallel pipette in this case for the given input vectors v v prime and v double prime is 3 so this one form returns the number the real number 15 let me um, look at a an example of a three form on four dimensional space so I'll work with respect to an example so four dimensional space will have axes x y z and let's say t and it's always important that we re refer to and keep the ordering of the axes so let's let order x is the first axis y is the second z is the third t is the last a three form on four dimensional space can be uh, expressed using notation along the following lines so here i've got a function of x y z t namely x squared plus t squared times an expression dx wedge dy wedge dz and i've got a plus and i've got a function of x y z t which is just x squared plus z squared times the expression dx wedge dt wedge dz and i want to explain um, how we evaluate such a three form on four dimensional space so what does this notation mean so let's take a point p in four dimensional space and three vectors v v prime and v double prime so um, we're going to be evaluating x squared plus t squared at the point p x refers to the first entry of p which is one t refers to the last entry of p which is 4 so we're going to be calculating 1 squared plus 4 squared times a volume of a certain parallel pipette plus and then we have x squared plus y squared so that refers to the first and second entries of p so we're going to be evaluating 1 squared plus 2 squared times the volume of a certain parallel pipette um, so let me explain which parallel pipettes so um, we're always taking the vectors v v prime and v double prime in that order so the first column always refers to v the second column always refers to v prime the third column always refers to v double prime um, but we've only put three numbers down and there are four numbers in those 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 vectors so which numbers do we put down in the columns well the dx dy dz tells us dx refers to the first entry of a vector dy refers to the second entry of a vector dz refers to the third entry so we put the first second and third entries of those vectors namely 1 2 3 2 3 4 and 3 4 1 um, when we come over to the dx wedge dt wedge dz dx refers to the first entry of a vector dt refers to the fourth entry of a vector and dz refers to the third entry so I'll put the first fourth and third entries of the vectors in that order so we put 1 4 and 3 2 5 and 4 3 2 and 1 so then we get uh, two parallel pipettes and ignoring the issue about signs we can calculate their volumes and having calculated their volumes which I have done uh, we can evaluate this this number uh, the two volumes are equal to 4 and the number is equal to um, 1 squared plus 4 squared which is 17 times 4 plus uh, 5 times 4 is 20 so I think it comes to uh, 80, 88 okay so that's um, 
a second example. Um, I'll mention that um, calculating volumes of parallel pipettes isn't so difficult uh, once you have covered some theory of determinants. Uh, that theory will be covered in the linear algebra module in the second semester, so I will not say much about determinants other than I might use the phrase determinant, but by it I'll mean the, the volume of, uh, of a parallel pipette. Um, and it's a signed volume, just like uh, for determinants of 2 by 2 matrices, uh, they correspond to areas of parallelograms, but when we interchange columns of a 2 by 2 determinant, we change the value of the determinant by a factor of minus 1. Well, the same is true for parallel pipettes and determinants of 3 by 3 matrices, so a sign is somehow incorporated into the, the, the definition of this volume. Uh, and you'll meet more about that in the linear algebra module after, after Christmas. But uh, I do, do want to say then that the, the theory of determinants provides us for free with a, with a, a convenient sign, sign or orientation convention. Okay, so that's a rapid introduction to what a three form is. Let me say something about the the determinant. Let me actually define the number. This this determinant. Let me de de at least give the definition, a definition of the number, the determinant of a three by three matrix, because that'll be uh, uh, helpful. So if you have a three by three matrix with first row v one one, v one two, v one three, second row v two one, v two two, v two three, and third row v three one, v three two, v three three. By its determinant, we mean a number, and as I've already said several times, that number uh, corresponds to the plus or minus the volume of a parallel pipette. The plus or minus has uh, is is based on the ordering of the columns, and it 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 works out from from elementary geometry. Well, maybe not so elementary, but one one can uh, do geometric calculations to find that the the volume up to sign is given by V11 times V22 times V33 plus and so on. So that formula is a handy formula to, to have, um, but the formula will become more meaningful when you uh, have met the theory of determinants. Now, let me explain about multiplying one forms. If we have two one forms, we can multiply them together and we form a two form. We can also multiply three one forms together. Here I'm, I'm considering three one forms, omega one, omega two, omega three, and there's a way of multiplying them together, I'll call it wedge product, or no, wedge multiplying them together, to produce a three form. A three form which inputs a point P and three vectors V1, V2, V3. So a one form inputs a point P and a single vector. And the the wedge product of the three one forms is defined as a determinant or as a parallel pipette volume as follows. In the first column of the determinant, we we take the first vector, the p is fixed throughout, so, so everywhere there's just one p, and when we look at the first column, uh, we take the vector v1 and apply omega 1, omega 2, omega 3 to v1 to get the first column of numbers. To get the second column of numbers, we take the vector v2 and apply omega 1, omega 2, omega 3 to it. And to get the third column of numbers, we take the vector v3 and apply omega 1, omega 2, omega 3 to it to get three numbers. And there we get a, a 3 by 3 array of numbers. We take the determinant, or the, the, the parallel pipette volume, that will be a real number, and that defines for us a, a 3 form. So, taking three 1 forms, we can multiply them together and produce a 3 form. Um, We've seen that we can multiply two one forms together to produce a two form. And we've also seen in previous podcasts that any two form can be expressed as a combination, a linear combination, a linear sum of uh, products of one forms. 
So with a little bit of thought, uh, I won't dwell on it because I'm going kind of rapidly. I just want to get the idea across. But with a little bit of thought, one can take this yellow definition that I have there and derive from it a formula for multiplying an arbitrary one form with an arbitrary two form, given that an arbitrary two form can always be produced as a, as a sum of products of, of one forms. Um, and so we can we can take a product omega wedge phi or phi wedge omega of a one form omega and a two form phi to produce a three form. So there is a method explained there in yellow of multiplying one forms and two forms to produce a three form. Um, This method of multiplication, uh, which is based on volumes of parallel pipes or determinants, determinants as defined here at the top of this slide, the determinant of a three by three matrix is defined at the top of that slide. So using the definition of the determinant of a three by three matrix, one can verify, I think I'll close some of these off and I'll go through them uh, one by one. One can verify various properties of the multiplication. For example, uh, throughout this, omega 1 and omega 2 are going to refer to 1 forms and phi 1, phi 2 are going to refer to 2 forms. And one can check that the multiplication uh, on the right by a, a 2 form phi 1 distributes over addition. So if you add 2 1 forms together, you get a 1 form. Um, and if you take the product of that 1 form with phi 1, uh, that, that that multiplication or product distributes over addition on the right. Likewise, multiplication by a one form on the left distributes over addition. And the product of a one form or the wedge product of a one form and a two form is commutative. Omega one wedge phi one is the same as the three form phi one wedge omega one which might seem a little surprising because when we looked at the multiplication of one forms, two one forms, we saw that uh, two one forms u and v when multiplied together, you, we got that u v was, or u wedge v was equal to minus v wedge u. So things are a little different here because um, yeah, because of the dimensions of the forms. Um, yeah, so when I have the omegas are one form, so omega one wedge omega two is minus omega two wedge omega one, uh, but that's that's not the case for a, a two form phi. For two forms and one forms, the the, the multiplication is commutative. And um, there are some other uh, con consequences of the definition that can be derived. I won't do it. I'm just going to state the consequences. So whenever you multiply three one forms together, but when two are identical, so if you take omega one, wedge omega one, wedge omega two, you're going to get the number zero. That corresponds to the fact that when you take the volume of a parallel piped uh, formed by three vectors, well, actually, if two of the vectors are the same, the parallel piped is going to collapse into a parallelogram, and a parallelogram has zero volume. Okay, so that's, uh, and then as a consequence of that blue uh, line, we get some other useful properties, such as um, if you interchange two um, of the one forms that you're multiplying, so uh, you change the sign by minus one. Okay, so that's some um, algebra of. Uh, uh, the multiplication of one forms. Let's now consider a differentiation of a two form. So recall that the derivative of a zero form is a one form and we've used that already. Let's recall that the derivative of a one form is a two form and we've used that um, in Stokes formula. So there's also the notion of a derivative or total derivative of a two form, and that will be a three form. So let me let me say something about that. If you have a two form, 
omega. So a two form can always be expressed as a combination of some function a dx wedge dy plus some function b dy wedge dz plus some function c dz wedge dx plus some function d dx wedge dt and so on depending on how many um, uh, coordinates you're working in. Uh, but a, a two form in any number of coordinates uh, it looks uh, of that form. Uh, then the, the derivative is a three form and it's defined as fo follows. So the derivative of a two form omega is a three form d omega defined as follows. We simply find the derivative of the zero form, the function a, and wedge it with the x wedge dy plus we take the derivative of the zero form or function b and wedge it with dy wedge dz and we take the derivative of the function c uh, wedge it with dz wedge dx and so on and that's the definition so let me let me illustrate it let's take uh, the two form x dy wedge dz plus y dz wedge dx plus z dx wedge dy so this is a particularly easy uh, form to work with applying the definition our a is just x our b here is the function y, uh, and our c of x, y, z, t and so on, is the function z, and we have to differentiate, to find the total derivative of x. The total derivative of x is dx, one, the derivative of x with respect to x is 1 dx, and then there are no other variables, so 0 dy, 0 dz, so it's just the, the total derivative of x is dx, the total derivative of y is dy, the total derivative of z is dz, so the the total derivative of omega will be dx wedge dy wedge dz plus y wedge d, dy wedge dz wedge dx plus dz wedge dx wedge dy, which I've written down. And then we can um, adjust, do some algebra, using the fact um, mentioned here, uh, the, 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 the last line in blue, when we interchange um, to... Uh, one forms when we're, when we're taking a wedge product and we interchange two we we interchange this we change the sign by minus one so um, we have a dx wedge dy wedge dz which is grand x y but now the dy wedge dz wedge dx we could actually interchange um, the the dx and the dz and we'd introduce a minus sign uh, so we could rewrite dy wedge dz wedge dx as minus dy wedge dx wedge dz and we could write dz wedge dx wedge dy as minus dx wedge dz wedge dy interchanging the, the, the first two terms there. We can do an, a further um, interchange uh, looking at the, 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 the term dy wedge dx wedge dz, we can interchange the dy and the dx to get dx wedge dy. That changes again the sign by minus one, so the minus now becomes plus, and likewise with the third term the minus becomes plus. So we find the d omega is three copies of dx wedge dy wedge dz, which we just write as three dx wedge dy wedge dz. Um, Okay, so that was that's that's a uh, that's that's an explanation of what the derivative of a two form is, the definition, and a, a, an easy example uh, implementing the the definition. So, here's a proposition that holds for any one form omega: the derivative of the derivative of omega is the zero three form. So the derivative of a one form omega is a two form and it can be shown that the derivative of a two form uh, the derivative of the derivative is actually the three form the zero three form the proof is uh, similar to the the case that we handled already for the case where omega is a zero form we've already proved that the derivative of the derivative of a zero form is zero and this is just um, um, a similar proof using the algebraic properties that were mentioned on this slide here. A second 
result that is handy to know is that if you have any two one forms u and v then their wedge product u wedge v is a two form and we can take the derivative of their product the derivative of that two form u wedge v and we get the formula that the derivative of u wedge v or the derivative of the product of u v is the derivative of u product v minus u product dv so we've seen a, a, a similar result for um, u and v as zero form the only difference here is that we have a minus occurring uh, instead of a plus uh, but but that that again the, the proof is similar to the case for 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 zero forms it's 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 al it's an algebraic proof using the the algebraic properties on the the previous slide um and it's probably good to bear in mind a general result for p forms which i've written down in blue and and in fact when we come if you come on to to learn about four forms five forms and so on p forms in general um, the result that can be proved is that there's always a derivative the derivative of a p form is always a p plus one form and that the derivative of the product uh, of a um, two p forms usually is uh, the derivative of u wedge p plus minus one to the power p so plus minus one uh, u um, wedge dv i guess i've forgotten a wedge here i should put the wedge in I'll just put the wedge in and I'll save the correction um, okay so that's it and then a th another result that holds um, is a well a definition first of all a two form omega is said to be exact if it arises as the derivative of a, a, a one form phi and that's analogous to the definition of exactness for one forms and then the Poincaré lemma again holds here we won't be proving the Poincaré lemma but it says that um, uh, if we're working on n-dimensional space or in fact on any contractible region in n-dimensional space but it is important that the region is all of n space or a contractible subset and then the Poincaré lemma says that a differential two form omega is exact if and only if its derivative the three form uh, the d omega is zero so that's um, those are some some prop propositions that we won't prove but uh, they, they're useful to know and let's uh, look at an example so let's verify the product formula for uh, the one form u equal to x squared dx minus z squared dy and v equal to y dx minus x dy so let's verify the product formula rather than prove it in general just verify it on a particular example so the the wedge of u and v that's the wedge of x squared dx minus z squared dy wedge y dx minus x dz now we can use some algebra to rearrange that uh, note that whenever we have a dx wedge dx that those terms disappear and whenever we have a well that's that's all we get so the, the dx wedge dx terms disappear and we use distributivity uh, and we can rewrite this this product uh, in that form um, then the derivative the total derivative of that two form is by definition the derivative of x z squared wedge dy wedge dz plus the derivative of x cubed wedge i've forgotten a wedge here now um plus the there's a wedge there and there's a wedge here okay um and we find that that comes to uh, well these derivatives the derivative of x z squared is Differential partial derivative of x z squared with respect to x is z squared dx partial derivative with respect to z is 2xz dz and so on so we work those uh, d derivatives out and we get that expression and we see that uh, 
any dz wedge dz so if we have a dz wedge dy wedge dz uh, that term will disappear so wherever we're going to get a dz wedge um, so here we have a d dx wedge dx that term disappears and if we get a dy wedge dy that disappears as well so uh, then we can simplify it to um, z squared plus so the derivative of u wedge v is just z squared plus 2yz dx wedge dy wedge dz and then we can calculate the derivative of uh, u wedge v minus u wedge the derivative of v and we find that it comes to to that which is actually the same okay so that's that was a, a, a routine uh, calculation and finally Let's consider the two form omega equal to x y squared z dy wedge dz minus y cube z dz wedge dx plus x squared y plus y squared z squared dx wedge dy and let's check that it's exact. Let's verify that there exists a one form phi such that the derivative of phi is that two form and by the Poincaré lemma it suffices just to check that the derivative of omega the three form is actually zero. So let's just do that. Okay, so we want to check, we want to check that the derivative of omega is zero and um, the derivative of omega is, uh, when you work out the derivative of omega, um, you find that it comes to, to, to this expression, which uh, can then be uh, simplified or rearranged to get zero. Okay, so there we have a kind of a quick introduction to three forms, how you multiply a one form and a two form to get a three form and how you differentiate a two form to get a three form. Uh, in the next lecture I'll talk about uh, an interpretation of um, this algebra and this differentiation but for now that's the end of the podcast so thanks for listening.